Um, Holy Spirit, our souls inspire, and lighten with celestial fire. Thou, the anointing Spirit, art, who does thy sevenfold gifts impart. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And as you may have gathered, if you haven't already, today we celebrate Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And we begin our worship by singing the hymn, Come Down, O Love Divine. And if you're using the Orange Book, it's number 114. Open our hearts to the Lord, 
who has prepared good things for those who love him. Almighty God, you poured your Spirit upon the gathered disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we held back from your Spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace. Speak the good news of your love, or live as a people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us. Transform our timid lives by the power of your Spirit and fill us with the flaming desire to be your faithful people, doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And having so prayed, may we know God's forgiveness. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. And we stand again to pro proclaim the glory. <coughs> glory to God, God in the highest, highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our collect, our special prayer for today. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. <clears throat> the New Testament reading is from Acts 2 verses 1 to 21. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages, as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard this loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in their own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phagia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking out in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk, that's all. 
Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. Now what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. And the sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great day and the glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Ian. Please stand for our next hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. And if you're using the Orange Book, it's number 67. Jesus Christ according to John. 
Glory Glory to you, O Lord. But I will send you the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth. He will come to you from the Father and will testify all about me. And you must also testify about me because you have been with me from the beginning of my ministry. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you for a while longer, but now I am going away to the one who sent me, and not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, The Advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Thank you, Rosemary. Lord, take my words and speak through them. Take our thoughts and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today is a celebration, a celebration as we remember the birth of the church, a celebration as we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit on those first followers of Jesus. And can you imagine what it must have been like to be in Jerusalem on that day? first time the Holy Spirit had come into the world. The Holy Spirit has been active in the world from the very beginning of time. Think back to Genesis when we read that God's Spirit moved over the waters of the earth. God breathed his life into humanity. We read accounts of some of the judges and warriors and prophets who were given God's spirit. Think of Gideon, Samson, Saul, although in Saul's case, when he disobeyed God, the spirit departed from him. Then there's King David who spoke of the spirit of the Lord is on me. Or Ezekiel as he prophesied over the valley of the dry bones, that the bones will come to life through the power of God's Spirit. Then we have Isaiah who looked forward to the coming of, of the God's anointed one and prophesied that the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. A prophecy that Jesus later claimed at the start of his own ministry. But so often in the, New Te- in the Old Testament, 
We read of the Holy Spirit being given for a specific task, for a limited time. But now, on this day of Pentecost, we read of the Holy Spirit being poured out generously, abundantly, on the followers of Christ. Pentecost was a really busy time in Jerusalem. Jews from across the known world would have been gathered there for the feast of Shavuot or Pentecost as it is known in Greek. A feast that celebrates 70, sorry, 50 days after Passover. 50 days also after the death and resurrection of Jesus. But that feast of Shavuot commemorates the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. When God appeared to his people, when he gave them his identity. In the Midrash, it's said that when God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, his voice was visualized as sound waves traveling around the camp. Sound waves that looked like flames, that separated and settled on each of the Jews there present. It said God's voice as it was uttered split into 70 voices in 70 languages so that all the nations could understand. 70 in the Midrash speaks of all nations of the whole world being able to understand what God is saying. And I can't help but think Luke must have known this. He must have been fully aware of that symbolism when he wrote the passage from Acts that Ian read to us earlier, when he described what happened at that Pentecost. So let's just place ourselves in that gathering with those who'd been gathered together, who'd witnessed Jesus' ministry, his death, his resurrection. They're gathered quietly in a room. Outside, Jerusalem is busy, it is bustling. But inside, <coughs> inside, it is quiet. And the disciples are gathered praying when suddenly a sound fills the room and what seems like flames settle on each person including you how do you feel can you begin to imagine the amazement of those who were there at that moment? <coughs> God, the God of Sinai is present in the world again in the form of wind and fire. The promised Holy Spirit that God, Jesus promised to his followers has been fulfilled. And the Holy Spirit is poured out abundantly. Not just on that one day, not just for a limited time, but for all time. Abundantly, even now, here in this church, in this benefits, so that all nations may hear God's word. And no longer does God's word belong to the Jews, but it belongs to the Gentiles too, to you and to me. Luke describes a scene of confidence and hope. Those disciples who had been only days before hiding, fearful, decimated by the death of Jesus, are now filled with a new confidence 
ready to proclaim boldly to all who will listen the good news of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And I love it that even stumbling, bumbling Peter is filled with the conviction. He speaks with such conviction. His voice is so compelling to those who are listening that many are brought to faith. Peter couldn't have done this in his own strength. We saw so often in his time with Jesus how he made mistakes, how he opened his mouth, and he didn't just put one foot in, he managed to put both in. But here we have Peter transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. He preached, and the Spirit descended, and people came to faith. John speaks of the advocate promised by Jesus being poured out, guiding God's people to the, in their words and in their actions. Our reading from Acts only has the beginning of Peter's speech. I invite you to go home and read the rest of Acts chapter 2. Read what else Peter says and think about how his words compelled those who heard that day. And the Holy Spirit, we know, continues to work its power throughout the rest of the New Testament, throughout the work of Jesus' followers as they went around the known world. And although some in the past have thought the Holy Spirit stopped working at the end of the first century, I don't think that's so. I believe that the Holy Spirit continues to work in power today, continues to enable us to speak of God's love, to speak to others, each in their own language. Now I've been reflecting a bit on what this means. Does it mean that as followers of Jesus we need to be great linguists, able to spread the news in many different languages? Because if so, I've sadly failed. I was absolutely rubbish at languages at school. I managed to fail a French O level. I'm not a linguist. But I do believe that the Holy Spirit enables us to speak into the hearts of those who listen, into their hearts, into their minds. I don't know how, I just know it happens. I don't have the right words, but God uses words. He uses our words, our actions, to speak to those who do not necessarily speak the same language as ourselves. And the Holy Spirit doesn't recognize any boundaries of race or age or gender or even socioeconomic status. As Peter quoted from Joel, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young will see visions, your old will dream dreams. God's Spirit is poured out on men and women alike. And all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Those first followers of Jesus were asked to wait before they received the Holy Spirit. And they waited, they prayed, and only when they were ready did the Holy Spirit descend on them. Are we ready? We are in, if you like, a time of waiting, waiting for Chris and his family to arrive and begin their ministry among us. Are we praying? I believe that the Holy Spirit that drew Chris to this place 
and through the power of the Holy Spirit, I really, truly believe that God has great plans for these parishes. But we need to keep praying. Praying that the Holy Spirit will open the hearts and minds, just not, of, not just of those of us in this building, but in our villages, in our schools, in those we encounter from day to day. We need to pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to anoint Chris and Sally afresh with a new energy and in a, new, a renewed passion for the task ahead. Pray that the Holy Spirit will enable us to respond, eager to follow God's will for this place. Pray that the Spirit of Truth will set our hearts on fire with the love of God. For there is still much work to be done in this place. We need to go out and proclaim the good news of the love of God to those around us. To speak of Jesus' life, death and resurrection and the work of the Holy Spirit. Are we ready? But from this moment, I invite you all to just close your eyes and open your hands, ready to receive a gift. Come, Holy Spirit, and set our hearts afire. Come, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is working within you now. I invite you to remain in communion with God. <laughs> but for the rest of us, may we stand ready to declare our faith. So let's stand for the prayer. We believe in God, God the Father, Father from, from whom, whom every, every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for our time of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, as we ask you this day to send your Holy Spirit, so we pray that you might send it into all your church and throughout the world. We pray for your church gathered here today, or worshipping with us at home, for all those seeking your kingdom in every sphere of their lives, for those waiting to be inspired so that the light of Jesus may shine bright for all to see. Lord, 
In your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. We pray especially today for peace in Palestine, Israel, Ukraine, and the Sudans, for their peoples living amongst violence and uncertainty, for their leaders and for others with influence that they might accept that all people have a right to a settled, secure life of peace. Lord, we pray for peace and for safety of all the aid workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. Bless and guide Charles our King and our governments. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. At this time of Pentecost, we pray for your blessing and love to be upon the communities of the Lavingtons, Chevrolets and Easterton, and Marion Harrison, who leads the church there. And in our worldwide Anglican cycle of prayer for today, we bring before you the Anglican Church of Canada. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. A prayer for Christian Aid Week. God, gardener of Eden, who flung stars into space and nurtures the tiniest plant, lift our hopes and dreams above the loss and damage of our suffering planet. Fill us with your life-giving hope and inspire us with your creative spirit now and in the age to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those facing cancer and life-threatening illness. And today we pray for the children and families being cared for by Julia's house hospice. And we pray for all those who are struggling in body, mind and spirit at this time, especially those on our prayer list and in a moment of silence, those others in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. We remember all those who we have loved and lost, and for those who mourn. Today we particularly remember the families of Sandra Harding and David Tucker. In company with Christ, who died and now lives, may they rejoice in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, blow away the things that keep people apart. Light your flame of love and hope in us, so that we can be your Pentecost people today. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St Mary Magdalene, St Michael, St George and St Mary the Virgin, and of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept Except these prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. So let's stand ready to share the peace. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. And peace goes upon you.
We continue our worship with our next hymn, God Forgave My Sin in Jesus' Name. And if you're using the orange book, it's number 212. Holy, 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 holy,
holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed, <coughs> took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <coughs> in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink. This, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring before you this bread and this cup and we stand at, thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you send your holy spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share in this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of Michael, Mary, George and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are many, many we are one, one body, because we all share in one, one bread. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sin of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is holy. Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
for those both here and at home who've been unable to receive communion today. Shall we say together the prayer of spiritual communion? Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And our post-communion prayer for today. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promise of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit, and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our hearts by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so I invite you to stand for our final hymn, Go forth and tell, number 238, if you're using the book. So a real big well done to all concerned. Shall we give that one a cup? I really think that deserve it. Lloyd, it's uh, gone up to £600 and 16 pence. Oh, 616 now. I, mean, I can't keep up. <laughs> £600 and 16p, I should have said that correctly. I'll round it up to 17 pence. <laughs> But talking of volunteers and that, I'm sure Tony, if he was here, would be ready to strong arms more volunteers for the fate, please, on the 8th of June. We do desperately need more people to help on the, on the day, to make cakes, 
to help make the coffee, to help wash it up as well. So please, if you're able to be join in and help with that, I think the sign up list is still at the back of the church. If not, speak to Michael or myself. We'll only be too happy to take your name. Coming up this week, as most of you are fully aware, we have the funeral for Sandra on Thursday here at 11.30. Please, when you attend the funeral, can you be considerate of other road users? We've had one or two complaints recently about parking in the nap. And we don't wish to antagonise our neighbours as we are here. And we wish to be friends with all. So please be considerate. We have been given permission to use the line and fiddle on Thursday, so if you're able to walk from there, please do. Looking further ahead to Sunday, we have, it will be Trinity Sunday next week, and we have a service here at 10.30. And then, if you've not finished and you'd like something different, you may wish to come along to tea at the tin at four o'clock in the tin church. And apart from telling you there's coffee after service, is that everything? And so our final blessing. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. the power